It's time for another episode of Old Roommates. Today on the show, we are revisiting Foul Play, the 1978 movie starring Goldie Hawn and Chevy Chase. So take a look in that cigarette pack of yours and make sure there's only cigarettes in there. And listen in. Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome to Old Roommates. Oh my God, I just Did you forget out. the tagline? The only podcast that revisits pop culture through a middle-aged lens. I'm Brian. I'm Christina. I was too busy looking through my cigarette pack oh my for God. a film. It's only been 170-something episodes, oh Brian. God. I've done that before. I've never seen you do that, though. And today on the show, <laughs> we are revisiting Foul Play, the 1978 hit comedy caper starring Goldie Hawn and Chevy Chase. Christina, we begin, as we always do, by talking about then. When was the first time you saw Foul Play? Um, I saw Foul Play on TV. Mm-hmm. In my living room uh -huh. with my sisters, nice. sitting on the floor. Um, yeah, I mean, I was a young child when I saw this movie. So I'm guessing this was in the movie theaters. So I don't know when I would have seen it, but I know it was on TV. Again, I was a young child. I'm going to help you. Tell me. Channel 56. Oh, okay. Or Channel go. 38. One of them. That's how I saw I think it was 56. That's, how, that's how I saw that this movie sense. the that first time. That makes perfect, yeah. perfect sense. Yeah. So, yeah. And I, wa I feel like I watched it a couple of times as a young child, mm -hmm. but have not seen it in like 40 years or so. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even longer. Could have been 45 years. I don't know. But in any case, I remember this movie fondly. Well, I thought I remembered this movie. Okay. <laughs> period. But my memory of this movie was joy, mm -hmm. laughter, mm -hmm. and Chevy Chase being a complete goofball, mm -hmm. and Dudley Moore. Being yeah. a complete goofball. But aside from that, like, I didn't really remember a whole lot. I remember the albino man. Terrifying. I remember mm -hmm. him being super, super scary. I didn't really remember a lot of the plot. I okay. just, I felt like it was just sort of like a sketch comedy kind of thing. Oh, okay. I didn't feel like it was very, I didn't feel like it was like a big murder mystery thing. If, if I had to tell you what it was as my child self, it would have been like, Two goofball guys and a goofball girl were having adventures and being followed by an albino, albino guy. Like, that was basically the extent of what my understanding of the movie was. Wow. Yeah. But I really liked it. I remember it fondly. Yeah. I remember it being funny. Mm -hmm. What about you, Brian? I know this is one of your all-time favorites. Oh, my God. This is one of my all-time favorite movies. I love Foul Play. And so, yeah. And what was funny is I remember being a kid watching Channel 56 and just, like, loving Goldie Hawn, mm -hmm. like, instantly loving her character, like, you know, going to the movies and, like, by, you know, kind of, like, essentially by herself. Yes. And, like, that was her plan. I loved her car. I loved her little red Beetle, mm -hmm. uh, sorry, yellow Beetle convertible, like, driving around San Francisco and, like, going to the movies, eating popcorn, and I was, like, and, you know, not, you know, being a kid and watching this movie and suddenly... The guy shows up and he's bleeding and his popcorn and she screams and then the body's gone and there's this, yeah. You know, and I'm telling you, I was never so thankful. And I talked about this on that, our episode of Halloween. Yes. The commercials. Because what was going on is like any time it was like I felt like scary because I, I was young and that the um, albino man is presented as a terrifying villain. Yes. And it's nothing, I mean, like, you know, I think just because you don't ever, I don't think I'd ever seen an albino person before. Yes. And I'm not even sure I'm using that expression right. Like, I we don't know. Really, Please, you know, I don't know if it's a... a it's politically a, correct. Yes, yeah, I don't I, know. I, but, I don't understand that either, but I do remember in, like, the 70s, yeah. that was, like, the murderous man. Like, the albino. He was, like, a weird man. That is the way he was portrayed yes. and painted. And, that's and I feel like albinos were in other movies, too. Like, I, oh, yeah, yeah, I have, like, this memory. I feel like that was the 
villain. Yeah. Like, you never want to come across an albino. Yes, I am. So, I, I'm, I apologize. I apologize. Yes. I didn't even think to look it up, but it's like, if is it a person who is albino or whatever the, the phrasing is? But all that to say, at least in 1978, it didn't matter in the sense of he was presented to be terrifying and trying to, what you think he's trying to do is kill Goldie Hawn mm-hmm. or at least hurt her or kidnap her or something. Um, and it doesn't stop there because then there's the um, little person mm-hmm. um, and he, there's some little person, some uh, quote unquote, a dwarf, beware the dwarf, beware the dwarf. And then that is that whole thing. And then there's, it's just terror at every turn, even though lots it's a comedy. Of, lots of, um, like, kind of scary-ish characters. Yeah. Like, but I'm telling you this. Unusual. Unusual villains. I am telling you right now, I my biggest fear is home invasion. Biggest fear. Yes. And Not that anyone would like it, but you know what I mean. I mean, big fear. And this movie is, is why. Because, but one of the reasons why, because I, like, it was the first time I think I saw a movie where someone broke into someone's house, mm-hmm. and Goldie Hawn is in her apartment, and she senses something's wrong. The door was open, she assumed it was her landlord opening up, which was kind of a bad call. She has course, no weapon yeah. on her, and she just kind of walks into her room, Mr. Hennessy, Mr. Hennessy, and then she sees the shower curtain d- blowing in the breeze. Scary. She moves it. Again, no weapon. I think yep. I would have had a knife on me. Uh, and then she turns but around. at this point, there's no reason for her. That's Although, not oh, true. Oh, wait, wait, that's not true. That's right, that's right, that's right. Because he Be already really, witnessed like, a murder. And never mind, never a, mind. Wow. I apologize. I said I apologize. Then she turns around, and there's this man with a scar in his face. And she screams, drops a glass, and then he strangles her. She grabs the knitting needles, the whole thing. And then she thinks she's safe. She runs to the phone. She calls the police. The guy gets up, and then the albino is also somehow somehow managed to get up into her window. Yes. Second floor up. And throws a knife. And it's just like t- absolutely terrifying to the point where she faints. Yes. She faints out of sheer terror. It is unclear. Like, because later she is... Well, I guess, wait, wait no. I'm talking about then still. We are still talking about then. So anyway, all that to say, this movie was so exciting to me as a little kid and scary and funny and I just loved it. I fell in love with Goldie Hawn. Mm-hmm. I thought it was just great. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But now And now <laughs> but it brings us up to our present. So this yes, as I was ex- I was actually excited to revisit this movie. Mm-hmm. I I had a very busy week and it was tough getting it in, but I did because I wanted to be able to sit down and just relax and revisit this movie and really pay attention and everything. And I'm so glad that I did because there was a lot of it that I forgot about. Clearly, like, a lot of potholes. Well, potholes. <laughs> Plot holes. I had no memory of, like, the clergy being involved in this. It was so funny. I'm like, wow, was that always in this movie? Mm-hmm. But it just goes to show. I mean, honestly, it was at home. I was probably up getting snacks and, eat, mm-hmm. you know, having lunch. And it, there was no pausing this yeah. movie. Yeah. There was, you know, none of that way back then. So I think I just, I missed a lot of it. But I really, really loved it. Barry Manilow's song put, brought me right back, right? Which and is played throughout. It is played throughout. And it's so funny how much screen time that song gets. Because the, in the beginning when she's driving the car around, it's the yes. opening credits. I think there's like three title cards that are about the song. That's crazy. It's like, ready to take a chance again. Like, written by da-da-da. Performed by Barry Manilow. Da-da-da, da-da-da, Barry Manilow. That, this, like, it's like movie, three this, different things about the song. And it played a huge role in the movie. It was constantly about being... chances. Because it it's about taking chances. It was all about taking chances, but it plays, plays at the beginning, it plays at the end, mm-hmm. and throughout the score of that, yeah. so, that song is played. So it's really interesting. You'd never see that this... Of, what is going Ryan on on your phone, Christina? People love Be me, invested. I'm not paying attention to it. Wait, well, it's uh, distracting. It, I don't know how do you how do you shut off the vibration? I don't know how to do that. I'll that's, just sit on that's it. That's what she said. <laughs> <laughs> That'll take care of everything. Um, you might need to have it. Sh- no, I'm just kidding. So I think you just kind of you said you, so you liked it. Oh yeah yeah, yeah 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 I definitely liked it and it was great to like revisit with an adult perspective yeah yes with a grown-up view i 
loved Goldie Hawn in this because she isn't a goofball. She isn't what I remembered her to be. She was actually a pretty cool lady. She yeah. was an independent woman. She was divorced. Mm -hmm. But she wasn't a victim. No. She was strong and smart. Mm -hmm. And I, I just loved her whole attitude about she's taking care of herself and doing things by herself. Like she wanted to take a ride down the coast. So she did just by herself. And that was very, very cool. Yeah. I really thought that was awesome. So I really loved her character. And then when Chevy Chase shows up, what I thought was really funny is his first, the first scene you see him in He's his regular old goofy Chevy Chase where he like goes to pick up a drink. And I he, like, laughed out loud. I did yeah. too. Spills the drink across the bar and then spills more drinks across the bar. And what I love is that completely turns off Goldie Hawn. Like first the, I'm sorry. You really I, can't, you can't just. I'm just going to okay. bring it right now. All right. I'm, it's on the floor. I don't know what, what happened now. Can I wonder if they can even hear that. Anyway. Okay. But see them flirting, kind of smiling at each other. And they have a connection, and then he does this crazy, like, goofy thing, and unintentionally, and it completely turns her off. Yeah. And she, like, kind of walks away, and I'm like, I love that. Yeah. I think that's awesome. Yeah, because most would have been, found it, like, found it adorable. Yes. Like, but she's oh, just like, I yeah. don't have time for this no. clothes. I'm not going to pick up after him. Yeah. But, yeah, I loved just that those introductions of those two characters yes. was wonderful because it was so it was very di well she was very different but even throughout the movie he proved to be very different than what i remembered him to be because he wasn't a super goofy goof no he was actually yeah. kind of a straight guy yeah. yeah and i mean there were some funny things that he said here and there but he wasn't like a bumbling goofball the yep. dudley moore character ended up being that bumbling goofball I mean, I, there's so much to say. It, I, it's so, so... I don't know. And I, If you have never seen this movie, it's so worth seeing. Um, it's very different than what you think it's going to be. I think I agree. And even the cover art is like Goldie Hawn like, hugging Chevy Chase from behind in this like, cute little pose. But, and he's shooting his gun through his pocket. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I didn't, I didn't his, catch that. Yeah, he's That's shooting so a hole in his pocket with his gun. Because it's not, it's not like laugh out loud funny. No, I mean, it's, it's, it's like a comedy, it's like a caper with comedy. It's comedy. exactly, it's a caper with comedy. It's yeah. not a goofball comedy. Comedy with a murder mystery. With a murder mystery. It's involved. like, yeah. Um, what I, my first note here, uh, oh, well, first of all, it's written, written and directed by Colin Higgins. Colin Higgins, two years later, would direct... Nine to five. Oh my god. He gosh. also wrote Harold and Maud back in nineteen seventy one. Sadly, he died. I know. He died at like forty seven years old. Oh my gosh. Uh, I have to get this out of the way because um yeah, he died forty seven years old, nineteen eighty eight. He died of AIDS. Oh. Um and but there's the Colin Higgins Foundation that was started in nineteen eighty six um to support gay and trans youth. Gosh, so he started so ahead before of his time. he died. Yeah, before he died, and um, is it still? Active I think it's today, still going you know? on. I have not. I didn't research that, but because I saw Colin Higgins, I'm like, wait, we've we've done something with Colin Higgins before. Um, one of his movies, and it was nine to five. So, um, but yeah, but I think the movie looks great. It's like it feels suspenseful in the right ways, yes. and, and just like. The scene, even the scene, like when in the spa, the uh, massage parlor is just so great. Oh like it's everything's done so well. Like the seedy parts look seedy, the sophisticated parts look sophisticated. Uh, it just, it's just directed so well. And then the, the Mr. Tibbets, Tibbets, Mr. Tibbets, Tibbets, Stanley Tibbets, T Stanley Tibbets. Even like his, I feel like his parts are at the exact right time, like right in the middle. Dudley of Moore's Dudley yeah, Dudley Moore's yeah. character. Yeah. He's really funny in this mm -hmm. i think he's really really funny in this and it comes at right just the right time when you're feeling a little bit a little like a lot suspenseful or something major happened or is about to happen and then you see him and he just makes you laugh and he, you really forget like what else is going on because you're just enjoying his performance did you oh my god did you like when he said oh I know what you're gonna write. I know what you're gonna really? say. Because I wrote it. Yep. 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 Take yep. Your... Oh wait. Oh, I have. Take your time, pussy pie. 
<laughs> oh my god. This is PG, by the way. Oh, no. Well, no, there's a few things done. But what he said was, here it is. My own little beaver trap. Yes! <laughs> That's, um... Beaver, uh, again! Well, it's uh, Smokey and the Bandit. Beaver, yeah. again. So, my very first note, though, is that that party, that really good friend of hers... That could not be ruder. Oh if anyone gosh. ever said this to me, she's like, Gloria, I mean, you're divorced. You know, she's like, <laughs> show some cleavage. Take off your glasses. Take chances, Gloria. It's like, thanks for inviting me to your party. I'm going to go now and go well, see a movie by myself. Do you remember what she said, though? She said, I am. I'm at this party, party. aren't I? Right. Like, that's, I love her. She's yeah. so good. She's really in control. Yes. But you're, you're absolutely She's right. a great character. Um, <laughs> I did write, Scotty, <laughs> the guy she picks up, Scotty belongs in a bad Charlie's Angels episode. Totally. Right? He, I swear to God, at one point he says, gee, gotta run. And that's how he <laughs> says it. He might as well be Chucky in Child's Play. <laughs> gee, gotta run. Um... And it just the and also the di- he's not helped by the dialogue. It's like really heavy handed. It's yeah. like oh well, quit smoking. You'll live longer. That's the plan. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Yes. Um, he maybe even plays it too serious, but I'm glad because it does add that danger when he yes. shows up at the movie theater bleeding. Yes, I did like the fact that she he doesn't show up outside, and she goes to the movie anyway. Yep. I love that. I love her so much. Yeah. She's my favorite character in this whole movie. Well, I love how all the supporting characters have their other thing. Like, yeah. the guy, the movie manager, is having, clearly having an affair with one of the usher women. Oh, yes, yeah. yes, yes. And uh, and then there's the friend at the library, then there's the the woman at the library, her boss, or, you know, I don't know if it's her boss, but the other co-worker. But they all have these little, like, these little story, yep. storylines yep. going. Um, it's very cute. Yeah, her I friend did write, funny. I love... How, um, I haven't had a piece of popcorn since February because uh-huh. of my diverticulitis. And she just eat, makes that popcorn look so delicious. Yes. And I did write, I love how Gloria runs. Oh. oh did you notice how she runs? No. She doesn't, like, run as, like, most people. Like, she runs with, like, her arms out, umbrella in one hand, and, like, <laughs> arm, other arm in the other. And she just runs, like, oh! Ew, she runs like Miss Piggy. Oh my god! Like it's oh so good, and her blonde hair is like flinging everywhere. It's so funny and so effective because this character is not used to being in a murder mystery. Right, and how gorgeous <laughs> is she? At, at like at the last half of the movie in that blue dress. Yeah, I struggled with that. I'm like, I struggled that she didn't change. change that yeah. was my original thought. Yeah. Was when she gets the phone call and she runs and she doesn't change yeah. but then after a while I was like she's just so beautiful in this dress and it works like it really moves in every scene like it's part of the the character yeah um I so I save, them I was gonna save this little fact but um original casting oh boy what do you want to guess based on the dress and lack of a she was, she lack of a bra lack of a bra, lack of a bra. Bo Derek about Farrah Fawcett oh Course, yeah, Fawcett. and um, Harrison Ford was originally uh, the, but he turned it down. Chevy Chase role. He would be pretty good in that, I think. Followed by, oh no, I'm sorry. Yeah, Harrison Ford, and then um, for the Dudley Moore character, Tim Conway. Wow. He turned it down. He could have just wow. had it. And he turned it down. That's interesting. Yeah, um, Farrah Fawcett couldn't do it because of legal issues with Charlie's Angels at the time. It's second Charlie's Angels reference. I know. I didn't, I didn't mean that. I will say libraries are so damn creepy. Ghostbusters. Very, very creepy. <laughs> and this triggered a recurring <gasps> nightmare I used to have as a child. Oh, please tell us. It was, and I believe it's, I think this movie is to blame after a while. I'm like, I bet this is why I had these because it's, they started about that time. I had a dream that I was being chased in the Stoughton Public Library. Oh, my God. In between the aisles by what what you... Actually, the only way I can describe them right now 
is like the ET alien, not alien guys, but the ET astronaut guys. Yeah. Oh my so God. So they were aliens, but they looked like astronauts. Yeah. And there were a bunch of them, and they were chasing me around the inside of the um, Stoughton Public Library. And I, as I'm watching this movie, I'm like, oh my God, I think this is where it all began. Libraries are scary. Very creepy. Yeah. Great, great set for like a murder mystery. Yeah. But even Ghostbusters, the library yep. scene. It, there's Same something thing. about yep. it. It's like it's because it's meant to be so quiet and like. And there's dim. so much hidden. Yes, right. It's very Could hidden. Could be something around every corner. Any corner at all. Easy to hide. Okay, so one thing I love about this movie, and it only hit me at the end, was that I think the real sort of heroes here are women. And older folks. Yeah. Burgess Meredith. He was fantastic. Unsung in this. hero. I would argue he did possibly, possibly more actual stuff than maybe Chevy Chase's Probably, character. Probably, I would say yes. In terms of helping Gloria. Yes. So, um. Although her friend was very helpful. That's my next note. Is Stella. Stella, her friend. She's giving her all kinds of weapons and things. And not my she she well self defense thing. First thing is she shows them to her, and then mm-hmm. after the scare, she gives them to her. Yes. Yes. And I wrote down one of my favorite lines of the movie, from Stella to Gloria, but she says, "They make a grab for your tits, you flick the switch." Which it's called the screamer. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> this is called the screamer. They make a grab for your tits. You flip the switch. <laughs> woo, 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 woo. And like the dogs start barking. And oh, it's so funny. She's like, honey, you got to drag yourself into the 70s. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my so God. Ra- rapists are very, what is it? Rapists are very common in, what was it? Oh, hitchhikers. Ra- hit. Many hi- hitchhikers are rapists, honey. You got to drag yourself into the 70s. Yeah. And she said, what is it? She said something that was so profound when she said, it's not a sex act. It's a. It's a it's that's a right. Violence. She goes, rape is not about sex. It's about violence. Yes. And I love that. I'm like, wow. That is her. ahead of its time. Yes. That, at, least, at least in terms of being, um, let's say, outward about that. I had, I had yes. never, you know, heard that. And I, when I was like, oh, shit, this is great and accurate and ahead of its, yes. feels ahead of its time. Yes. Um, nobody messes with Stella unless Stella wants to be messed Oh my God, she's amazing. <laughs> she's so good. I do think her things rhymed, right? Because one was like something um, like that. Yeah. Well, there was a screamer. Then there was Mace right in the face. Yes. And then she goes, and the she like the grip, fists of fury. <laughs> oh, what was it? Bust, bust him in the. N- oh yeah, it was so. She's she amazing. Was so, so but good. another strong woman. Yes. And a nineteen seventies comedy. Yes. Paper. Um, Burgess Meredith just. Funny every single time he miss he miss he miss <laughs> words the warning. Yes, Gloria, it's like you said, look out for the elf. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Hennessy, no, beware the dwarf. And then later on he goes, Gloria, it's like you said, beware of the midgets. They're taking over the world. It's like no, Mr. Hennessy, he didn't say that. He oh said, beware the dwarf. Oh my God, so. Damn. I love funny. it. I love it so much. Dudley Moore, <laughs> again, was super funny and cuter than I remembered. I never thought he was attractive, but I thought he was really cute in this. That's a middle aged lens for yeah, sure. Absolutely. I laughed so hard, and I don't think I noticed it before when he says, uh, uh, she's like, she, she, he thinks she's hitting on him. And she's like, I need, we need to go to your place, whatever place is closest. We yes, need to go. Yes, we yes, need to go yes. right now. Let's go. Let's go right now. And he goes, would you mind if I finish my drink? And he lifts up the candle. Did uh, you notice? I didn't notice he that. He picks up the candle that's on the table and he goes, and he's like, oh. <laughs> that is clearly an ad lib. I don't know how Goldie Hawn kept it together. That's with amazing. Scenes with him. He is so funny in he's this He's so funny. I forgot yeah. how funny. It makes me want to revisit Arthur now really badly. Uh, but yeah, do you mind if I finish my drink? It's a lit. It's a lit candle. Oh my gosh. Um. Yeah. PG. The PG rating is surprising here. Uh. Sex. Sex. Inflatable sex dolls. Yeah. There is a sex den. There is clearly sex toys on the racks to the point where Goldie Hawn says, "I never knew there was such diversity." Oh, that was funny. Yeah. 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 No, uh, she said something like, 
I wrote something about her just being so naive about, what did you think? She said something like that. Oh, no, she, yeah, she said something like, did, what did, what did you think was going to happen? It's like, <laughs> you've been looking out the window and he's been setting up this entire right. thing. Like, come on, dude. You asked him, you, you, you were desperate. She about, never She thought, never says. How she was coming across. Yeah, yeah, she never says, I think I'm being followed. She doesn't say anything like that. She just says, I need you and, and all that. So mm-hmm. anyway, that was kind of funny. I know, she really could have said, you need to help me. I'm being followed by this guy. Yes. Please help me. Please help yes. me. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, that, I also thought this was a funny little moment when, so the scar, the guy with the scar happens, the albino happens, and then she faints. I wrote, this is so terrifying, and it's still effective. That's yeah. scary. I, yes. I found it scary for yes. PG. Um, a Goldie Hawn comedy, yeah. And then Goldie Hawn is trying so hard to explain what's going on to the to the detectives, and she says, oh my God, it happened again. The dead body. It vanished. And Chevy Chase says, maybe it was embarrassed. (laughs) (laughs) He does have some good lines. I was surprised it took him so long to get into the movie. Like, I thought he was in there from the very beginning. Well, you would think that. You'd think that he's top billing with Goldie. Yeah. Gloria. Oh. (laughs) Gloria, did you drop acid earlier? Oh, my God. Which made me laugh. Um, and that's not even the first person that accuses her. No. Because the guy in the movie theater says, listen, you want to smoke your funny stuff? Do it, do it someplace else. And they're very open about drugs in this movie. <laughs> even when they're Chevy Chase and her are at, on was the boat. Yeah. He's like, oh, do you, he basically high. offered yeah. her marijuana. And she's like, no, no, thank you. And he's like, yeah, yeah, me either. Or she said, no, I, I don't do it anymore. Or something that's on right. that idea. When he says cops have the best dope. And yes. she's like, oh, I don't need it. I don't do it anymore. I don't need it. Yes. But I thought it was so interesting how, like, these are the good guys. Yeah. Like, this you wouldn't is, well, see that today. The, it's the 70s. Even though it's, you know, legal and everything else in a lot of places, yeah. you still wouldn't see a main character, the good guys, smoking or offering drugs, drugs to each other. To right. Each other. Like, that's kind of crazy to me. That's a good um, note. But I liked what he said. He said, you've got to see how, abs- how absurd this whole thing is. We've got no dead body, no sign of violence, and our sub suspects are albinos and chain smokers. <laughs> <laughs> um, another good one. Stella comes back to give her these these self defense gadgets, okay. and she says, "Gloria, you are a walking light bulb waiting to be screwed." I have <laughs> I'm having done too. It's so funny. Yes, I love it. I love it so much. She's so good. She was like but it pisses me off because in the next scene, she, Gloria Goldie Hawn, sprays the captive, the guy that's holding her captive, with mace, and then just drops the mace on the floor and grabs her precious umbrella. I'm like, are you kidding me? The mace is what just saved your life. Yep. Why are you dropping it on the floor? I don't know. She seemed safe, I guess. Um... The Scrabble game. Oh, my God. That's always so funny to oh me. Oh, my gosh. I, I forgot all about that. I, I think it went way past me. But, oh, my gosh. These elderly women <laughs> playing Scrabble. And one of them writes out F-U-C-K. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Because I see the F mm-hmm. and I see the U-C-K yeah. on her board. And I'm like, no. I thought that was going to be the end of the joke. But she actually uses it. And then, further on, she writes M-U-T-H-E-R. Before that, the other woman adds on and writes er. Oh, so er. Yeah, 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 that's right, that's right, that's right. R. And, and then, then M-U-T-H-E-R. Yeah. And I'm like, this is hilarious. And then she's like, well, I think that's hyphenated. Like, and yeah. they have a conversation about it. I was just, I was dying. I'm like, that is so damn funny. It's just these funny little random like asides that yes. I think that helped break up the tension. Definitely. And I think that's why I liked it so much as a kid. Because it was yes. like the scary moments so, were so broken scary up. And yeah, intense. yeah. yeah. Inten- the intense, yeah. Um, so damn funny with um, the little person coming to sell Bibles, Billy Barney. Oh my gosh, yes. And it's so scary because he has asked for her at the library. Yes. And she's being warned about the where the dwarf. Yep. And then he shows up, and it's amazing, because she looks at the, her door's eye hole, and there is, is his face, but she opens the door, and he's, and he's standing on his suitcase, because he's a Bible salesman, but she doesn't know this, and he's talking a lot about God, and Gloria, yep. do you believe in yep. life after death? Oh. And, she, and at one point before that, she goes, 
Gloria, I'm just here to help you get closer to God. And she goes, ah! <laughs> she goes, just, 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 I'll, try, I'll try and do it. She goes, ah! get away from me. <laughs> so <laughs> funny. And he goes, Gloria, listen, I just have a question for you. Do you believe in like, and then she pushes him. And that is a big bag of bullshit. I mean, he would have fucking died oh, the yes. second he hit the ground, not, oh, not yes. landed in a yeah. barrel, rolled down the hill, popped out, went it. When yeah, that's, when, and that's when it's a comedy. That's when it's a comedy. Yeah. And um, I did think that was a pretty cheap shot because he is a little person in a barrel. Like, I just thought that was like, yeah, eh, they wouldn't have done that to a, to a fully grown. The only thing like they a, sing is like, dun, 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 Yeah. Dun, and I felt like they were kind of mocking the plight of the little Definitely. person. Definitely. Um, but it was great when she, I, I don't think I've ever seen that in a movie, one of these ridiculous movies where she visits someone in the hospital to oh apologize and makes it worse. Yes. That was funny. <laughs> that was very funny. He tries to kill a fly on him or something. I have a, a line written down here from Chevy Chase. Mm -hmm. Don't worry, Gloria. There really is someone out there trying to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> she was worried that no one was believing her. I loved the scene on the couch with the two of them. It was so adorable. Mm -hmm. It was so cute. They were so cute and flirty, and they they really liked each other. And it was like they had so much chemistry. And I really liked that they were talking about you know what do you, what did you think of me and you know and then of course in the back it's ready to take a chance. Instrumental is going on in the back, and oh my god, so cute, mm -hmm. really cute scene. I loved it. Mm hmm. Um, yes, they have great, chem really great chemistry. It's fun. Um, and it reminded me a little bit of the flirty, cute chemistry of, um, Goodwill Hunting a couple weeks, weeks back when we were talking about Minnie Driver and Matt Damon on their cute little dates. It seemed like a natural kind of cute first date kind of thingy. It did remind me of that same yeah. kind of chemistry. The only thing I would say is that I think, um, Goldie Hunt is very emotive. Face. Yes. And so it, it challenges the strong woman we met in the beginning yep. a bit because she just kind of gives a little too much away with her face. Like she's so smitten by him. Yes. And her whole face contorts like the entire scene. That's the only thing I would be, I was like, eh. But uh, I do like their chemistry a yeah. lot. Yeah. Um, let's see. I have to be honest. I don't have too many notes. But that fight between Mr. Hennessy and... And Delia Darrow oh my gosh, so is funny. so funny and exciting. Yes. Like, and I love that they're both like senior, you know, older yes. people, but they are karate masters. Yep. And of course, who would have thought they'd both be great at karate? And it is so fun. It is so and funny. funny. This it, old man. Burgess with a Meredith woman. is Burgess Meredith he is, was is really, fantastic really good. I don't know if I've seen him in anything. Well, else. he was the penguin in the Batman TV show. Did you ever watch yeah, the I don't think TV? I ever watched the Batman movie. Oh, he was TV amazing show. in that. He was an excellent. Well, I'm penguin. sure I know he's a, a very seasoned, well liked yeah. actor. Um, I remember him from he was in commercials, right? Wasn't he in like a dog chow commercial? Or I don't know. know. But anyway, I really I liked him, but I had never really seen him act. Oh, okay. And he was really really good. Um, and I loved that this all this fights going on. And Chevy Chase and Goldie Hawn are just sitting there, like, watching the like whole a thing. Like a tennis game. That made me laugh yeah. so much, just seeing their expressions. I loved it, loved it, loved it. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, yeah. Take your time, pussy pie. So when Dudley Moore's character is in the massage room, he yeah. doesn't realize that it's Goldie Hawn. And <laughs> so he's, like, getting all ready for this erotic massage moment that he's paying for. Uh, it just it's just so funny, and I'm yeah. glad we catch up with him again. It's like yes, yeah, several yeah. times because I was wondering that too. I was like, wait, do we? That was, a, you know, a great scene, but it was. I really was hoping that we would see him again. Yeah, and we did a couple of times because even at the very end, he ends up being the st the stuffy conductor. Um, <laughs> yes, it's great. I will say, I I think the. Excuse me. The car stuff at the end went on way too long. Do you agree? Uh, yeah, ending a bit long. Yeah. Yeah, it just didn't. It, it, it didn't need to be that way. I mean, no. like, I, they would have probably have gotten rid of the middle truck driver guy. Yes. Because what the funny thing is, like, with the um, tourists that don't speak English, and yes. they're just loving this crazy, dangerous car ride. Right? That's great. And yeah. at one point, the camera cuts, and there's no one on the seat. Oh. It's because they have fallen. Fall, they slipped off the seat laughing. Mm -hmm. It's so funny. Um, could have done without... They crash through the uh, Italian restaurant. Yes. 
And when I was a kid, I used to laugh at this part. And as an adult, I was like, oh, my God. It's like grown word. Because <laughs> I swear, every other person goes, mama mia. Oh. Like, really? Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. It's, and I felt like it's almost racist. Yeah, yeah, it seemed a bit stereotypical. Stereotypical, stereotypical, bigoted. Yeah. Yes. Towards Italians. Um, yeah, my yeah, really, my last note was that the ending is a bit long, and the um, the people in the back of the car laughing was just hilarious to me. They just had the best time. Yeah. Um, let's um, see. And then yeah, the whole I think it was a combination of the car chase and then. The acting on the stage, like I just felt like between the two, there was just like a lot of lot, a lot, uh, a lot of stuff. I agree with yeah. that. And it, once again, it's the uh, the albino guy grabbing Goldie Hawn again, yeah. dragging her across the thing. Like it was great. Like she she grabbed the gun and she was strong. She stayed yes. strong and all that. Um, I didn't like, and I think my note was mixed up here. I think I didn't like how the black cop got shot. And then got tangled up in the cords and basically like hanged there. Yeah. And I was like, that was a bad choice. That I don't was a know. Bad like of all the cops, of all the different cops, they're white cops. Like it yeah. just looked unsettling, especially yes. through a middle age lens. Yes, for sure. Um, but uh, you know, I think even as a kid, I was like, did they have to kill that cop? Like, yeah. I mean, it, it was a little. It extreme. wasn't necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Um, some middle aged lens things, the you know, the cop dying, um, the umbrella as a weapon, not so much. I feel like when you know your life is in danger, because she, and I bring it up because when he's like, Gloria, it's a trap, she holds her umbrella like she's ready for attack and it went and it works. Yes. But I just think, like, if she was, if she know, it was a beautiful day, if she knows that she's gonna need a weapon, then bring the stuff. What's her face gave you? Bring the stuff Stella gave you. Um, Wait, somebody said bring an umbrella though. Remember? Oh, that's true. Oh my God, I'm sorry. You're right. Yes, that's I right. Just, I was just thinking about. It. I'm like, wait, was that another yeah, movie? Yeah, it was. No, it was the yeah. the sergeant guy. He's and they said, slapped him in the bring face. Bring an after. umbrella because yeah. it was supposed to be some sort of a code. Clue. Yeah, like this um, danger. So yeah. that's why she brought the umbrella. You're, thank you for reminding me. You're welcome. Uh, and then I did like that they slapped the cop in the face, uh, Brian Dennehy, because yes. they knew that they, they were, she was giving them a, he was yes. giving her a code. It, yeah. Yes, and it helped us to realize that too. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, no one. This is another one. No one saw the cigarettes. Oh my god. Oh my god. I don't even know how they fell there. Come like on. I thought they would have fallen on the floor, or like yeah. under the. Have them fall into the nightstand because. By the way, they're forgotten about. Yes, they're all like the, the, I was they're, waiting they're probably for them to start. still there. They as are we, probably as, still as the recording there. of this podcast. They're still in that apartment. Yes, yeah. I think so too. Um, the Bible salesman would have died. Oh, I thought this was interesting. The church as a money hungry sham. Interesting. Super interesting. Yeah. And uh, this is 1978. And at one point, the fake archbishop says. He's looking around this gigantic mansion, and he says, "Is this a stable?" And it, Inter I yeah. got a little chills. I was like, "Holy shit!" Nineteen seventy-eight. You're going after the church, right? And they're, I mean, but of course they're the bad guys. But they're not. It's not inaccurate in right? in many circles of our country, yes. where perhaps people that are leading churches or not maybe helping their congregation as much as they could. Yeah, I get it. So, I get um, you. I'm, I'm with you there. And then I just wrote the final car chase. I loved it when I was a kid. Now it seems way too long. Yeah. Yep. Anything else, Christine? Oh, more? I do not have anything else. I I liked it more. Yeah. Yeah, I remembered so little of it as a child. And just, uh, just appreciating the characters, especially the women characters, appreciating... Dudley Moore's character even more. I thought he was a goofball, but he was really, really funny. Mm -hmm. Really, really funny. And just, yeah, I, I just really appreciated the story of it this time. I just really liked it a lot more. Yeah, I think, uh, so I loved it as a kid. It's one of my favorite, like I said, one of my favorite movies. I hadn't seen it in a while. And I think I liked it even more because of something we talked about that you brought up before me, but like this strong female lead. Yes. Goldie Hunt's character is strong. Yes. And um, she goes to the cops, but because she's human, not because 
Like, right. you know, she goes to the cops because someone's trying to kill her, not because she's weak. Right. She's trying to, she doesn't know what's going on. She's trying to be but, um, but she's yeah. often, it's her against the bad guys. And I think it's really great. And Stella's a strong character. Stella, and even the the, the woman in the church. Yeah, the villain. She's, she's yep. a villain, but she's but a strong, strong woman. Yep. So, yeah. But, and, a, and all the supporting, Burgess Meredith, Dudley Moore. The, oh, my God. What Brian a cast. Dennehy. I mean, they're all What a cast. Great, what a great, 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 great. cast. Um, and... I have oh and on Patreon so we have match I have match game oh my gosh yes Patreon but on Patreon um, Patreon.com slash old roommates we're going to be picking our favorite Goldie performance yes yes I think I know yours actually as I sit here I think I, I do. I'm sure you know mine <laughs> I know yours. another revisit right yeah yep. yeah um alrighty and Alrighty. then time for match game are you yes I have an FMK. Okay, maybe you should go first. I'll then. go first. All right, so my FMK for you is Mr. Tibbetts. Okay. The Bible Salesman. Mm. And the Albino. Okay. So I have to write down what I think you're going to do. I haven't done that yet. Do, 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 do. Ding. Okay. All right. I'm going to marry Tibbets. I'm Interesting. Going, I'm going to kill the poor Bible salesman. Oh. And I'm going to F the albino. Oh my God, I got it completely wrong. Oh no. Completely wrong. What would, it, what would you say? I thought you were going to marry the Bible salesman. Interesting. Um, F Mr. Tibbets. Okay. And kill the albino. I think the albino through my middle age lens is kind of sexy in some ways. Oh my god! I do. You well, are he's because he's really something creepy, Brian. but he's like that. You know, it's like that, like like the, that creepy, mysterious, like a like, vampire kind of little. Like yeah, maybe. Yeah. But um, and then the Bible, I just couldn't because he's so religious. Like it's like just too much. That's a turn off for well, me. He's just selling the Bibles. He might not be religious. If he's gonna go around talking about meeting God, you're and, right. You're I don't want right. to think about death every day of my life. So rather than talk about God, you're going to murder him. That's really nice. <laughs> Gloria <laughs> almost did, but um. The yeah, I guess I I'm would. I'm surprised you would marry Mr. Tibbetts. He's fun, and honestly, I feel like he's so sexual he probably doesn't get much. Yeah, that's true. And it's like I think he's fun, funny, and goofy, and like, and you know, and if he's a little adventurous, that could be cool too. All right, I get you. All right, All what right. would you say for I you? I think for me, I might do the same thing you said. Actually, marry Mr. Tibbetts. Yes. Yeah. Did you say, you, you said F the I know. Yeah. Yeah, I would do the same thing. He's tall. Seems like you have a good yeah. body. Yeah. It just surprises me. I would feel like you would be too paranoid that he was going to kill you in the middle of it or something. Well, when you really realize what's going on here, like yeah. when he's, that, he's, that he's really upset at the church, that yeah. uh, this is what's really going on, and that what you find out is that these bad guys, quote unquote bad guys, were arrested because... The money backing the church essentially uh, sort of exposed them so they had to take mm -hmm. more aggressive routes and they got in trouble. Anyway, all that to say, instead of actually making change, they got right. they got violent. So, okay, here's my match game. You ready? I'm ready. Stella, Gloria's good friend who's all about self-defense. Yes. Stella had one more self-defense gadget. Ooh. Underwear lined with blank. <laughs> self, you see, it's self defense, Christine. So it's a self defense gadget of someone, you know. Under his line. Ding. Ding. <laughs> Christina Stella had one more self defense gadget. It's underwear lined with blank. With chloroform. Oh my gosh. 
<laughs> That's pretty good. And it ties into the movie. Yes. Because she got chloroformed. Yeah. yeah. Um, no, not a match. Oh, my I went electrical current. Oh, <laughs> God. But then wouldn't that hurt her? Well, I know. But my first, I originally had thumbtacks. I, like, my original thought was like razor blades. And I was yes, like, oh, wait, no, I don't want to wear that. That would that. hurt, right. No. So I'm like, well, so maybe I'm she like, has no, like a little. She can whip them out and then. What if she had something on her keychain that zapped? It oh. went and they would touch her underwear. She'd press the keychain, it zapped their That's, hand. That sounds amazing. <laughs> yeah. I think we should invent that. So it's that, awesome. our friends, was foul play. And that's it for this episode of Old Roommates. Thank you for listening. For bonus content, please visit us at patreon.com slash old roommates. And follow us on social media, Instagram, Facebook, at old roommates. Thanks for listening. Until next time.